It is graduation season, and among the class of 2021, a South Euclid teen whose senior year required far more courage than she could have imagined. Our senior health correspondent, Monica Robbins, explains. Caroline Rarick, tall and athletic, a powerful force on the volleyball court, but drawn to water all her life. I grew up a lake kid, and my family goes to the lake. My family like bonds at the lake. And it was at the lake with friends last summer. It was like about, I think, like six or seven of us, and we were split up on two different jet skis. It's really like a blur, honestly. Like, I don't know how it happened. From the back of the jet ski, keeping an eye on the tow line and inner tube as the group headed back in, Caroline recalls a gust of wind. So, like, the tube blew up and out, kind of, and I was holding onto the rope, so it, like, kind of took me with it. I just remember feeling something, like, tug. I knew I felt pain, so I knew something had happened, but I didn't know until I looked at it, like, how bad it was. Just below the knee, the rope acting like a saw cutting through skin, muscle, and bone, severing a vital artery. Caroline's parents at a graduation party let the first call go to voicemail, answering when it came instantly again. We got up and ran to our car and just, we didn't even know where we were gonna be going, but we just got in our car and started heading back to the east side. First to University Hospital's Giaga Medical Center, then to UH's Cleveland Medical Center, where a trauma team was assembling. It was also um, a race against time at this point to restore the blood flow to her leg. We thought or considered about doing something that we rarely do, which is doing an urgent amputation as the first best step to try to save the patient and get the best outcome. Working in her favor, Caroline's age, health, and access to the level one trauma center. Calm throughout, but the volleyball standout had one question for the vascular surgeon, Dr. Vic Kaship. But I just remember I was like, am I gonna lose my leg? And then there was like a pause. And then he was like, we're not scheduled for an amputation tonight. The team of vascular, orthopedic, and plastic surgeons went to work, performing a bypass on the severed artery, using a vein from her good leg, repairing broken bone, muscle, and tissue as best they could. Blood flow to Caroline's leg slowly returned. We knew things that we weren't out of the woods yet. What followed was grueling, heavy antibiotics, 12 days in the hospital, then home, waiting for the wounds to heal, more surgeries and months of physical therapy. The injury so severe, no one could predict the long-term outcome. It didn't matter. The trauma team had saved her leg, Caroline, would do the rest. From that point on, like I was just gonna like do everything I could to get better. Sidelined for her senior volleyball season, Caroline supported the Gilmore Lancers as they won the state championship. But she had her own victories too, graduating from a wheelchair to crutches and then walking on her own by Christmas. And I think it comes down to her resilience, her grit, you know, somebody that's able to withstand this type of trauma. By April, the teen who almost lost her leg was cleared to run again. And this month, she walked across the graduation stage. The scars on her leg, not a testament to what happened, but rather what she's made of. She's a tough, very tough. She's, she's the strongest person I know. I know that she can do anything that she puts her mind to, so. <laughs> I'm not worried about her. She will thrive. Monica Robbins, 3 News.